Cookville, too, is unexcelled in educational facilities. Here is located Tennessee Tech, a state college, offering a four-year course in technical and cultural subjects. Tech has approximately 1,200 students enrolled annually and is in the front ranks of the educational institutions of the world. The students stroll to the many modern buildings along winding walks through the vast campus acreage amid many varieties of... Welcome to Tennessee Tech Archives. If you have not seen uh, the tour yet in the previous video, I do recommend that you check that out too and get an idea of our space. I'm sitting in the smallest portion of it right now. And I'm just here today to share with you a few of my favorite things. Tennessee Tech Archives and Special Collections houses materials of historic significance to both the Upper Cumberland and Tennessee Tech University. Um, and this, my favorite things, is kind of something to explore some of these materials and share them with you. I get asked very frequently what my favorite things are, and it is the most difficult question, question for me to answer. And the reason this is, is because we have about 3,300 cubic feet worth of materials and there are so many gems and unique items and great stories and histories combined in those 3,300 square feet that it's really hard to pull a couple out um, to really discuss. Uh, but I'm going to tell you about a couple of them today and I'm going to start by talking about Charles Faulkner Bryan. Charles Faulkner Bryan was an American composer, a musician, and he was the director of Tennessee Tech's music department. He and his, what was later his wife, Edith, shared years worth of love letters while they were in school. Sometimes they even sent each other a telegram that just had a simple, I love you, as you can see in this Valentine's. Um, they referred to each other with all sorts of terms of endearment. We have darling, husband, dearest, precious, and even little piggy, as Charles would lovingly refer to Edith. Love letters are one of my favorite formats in the archives, even though it seems a little voyeuristic. We even get a lot of materials such as diaries, and these also contain a lot of personal information about people. But the content often offers insights into past relationships for people you're interested in researching, customs, current events of the time, if the two happen to correspond about that, and of course they tell you a lot about romance. Wartime love letters can offer glimpses into battles or even camp life, and a lot of the times you'll be able to get a lot of information about some of the etiquettes and customs that were around during the time that the love letters were being written. Even though the initial intent of a love letter is for it to be private, Love letters come to the archives all the time, and they help create a personal narrative for a person or even a time period. And um, one of the most interesting things that I find about the Charles Faulkner Bryan and Edith Bryan love letters is, um, is you can get a lot of information about how the couple's lives really revolved around music. And you can kind of hear this in this intro to a letter that I'm about to read you. Sunday night, July 11th, 1932. Dearest Charles, guess what I'm doing? I'm sitting up in my bed listening to the radio and I'm having so much fun. There is an orchestra playing and of course I'm thinking of you all the time. Thanks so very much for my radio. One of the things many of my students do like to learn about because it sends chills down their spine is that there used to be a cemetery on campus. It was purchased by the university in 1930. It was abandoned and neglected and gradually became more so, as you can see by the images. The project's initial survey, done by Leonard Crawford, found 166 graves, of which they were able to identify 43. By the time they moved the cemetery in 1967 for the expansion of the stadium, there was a total of 211 bodies found in the cemetery, of which 141 were unknown, many of which were moved to Shipley Cemetery, seen in this image. Harding Studios is one of the most popular collections that we have in the archives, and they can be seen around town and in local businesses. Richard Henry Harding began Harding Studio in 1940, and after 1944, when he passed away, his son Allard took over the family business. 
These photographs pictorially document life in the Upper Cumberland, but especially Cookville, both its businesses, the changes in the area, and the people who are in the area. There is approximately 100,000 negatives in the collection in various photographic formats spanning over 60 years.